Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. this conservation of energy and energy equation as you mentioned that this equation will be required when we have a considerable change in temperature in the flow. If it is not then of course, this equation will not be required. And I have already mentioned that most of this course or rather this course fully and even the next course we will consider incompressible flow without much change in temperature. So, this equation will not be required for this course as such. However, later on it will be required and used and you have to remember this equation without using it for the time being. Because we I would like to complete the governing equation at this stage. It could have been left for later use or later application and could have been derived later when you are going to use it, but since you are deriving the equations, we would like to complete the derivation at this stage. As you know the first law of thermodynamics usually we call a statement of energy conservation. The first law of thermodynamics as it states that the internal energy of a system changes due to the work done on it and due to the heat added to it. So, if there is a system and you add heat to it you would do some amount of work on it then its internal energy will change and the change in internal energy will be given by the sum of the work done on it plus the heat added on it. Okay. So, using that conventional notations the first law of thermodynamics says mathematical statement we will write say change in internal energy is equal to the sum of the work heat added plus sum of the work done. Hmm. Heat added to the system plus work done on the system. Of course, in this application we will consider that system is the fluid the moving fluid that is the system here. Now, as we were mentioned earlier that the thermodynamical laws are derived or postulated for system in equilibrium. The system is in thermal and mechanical equilibrium and we consider stated that the <coughs> moving fluid is not in that sense a system in equilibrium in thermal and mechanical equilibrium is not in that sense in equilibrium. However, looking to this, this rate of change in internal energy is sum of the heat added and sum of the work done. Now, the amount of heat added or the amount of work done there of course, can be measured and see whatever 
is the sum if we consider that as the increase in the energy. So, whether it is a system in equilibrium or not we need not be that worried. We can even consider that okay, even though the system was not in equilibrium, but it was passing through a successive stages of equilibrium and we can use this relation even for non equilibrium. Only perhaps change that we need is that while considering this energy instead of treating it just an internal energy we should treat it as the energy and moving fluid has energy other than the internal energy particularly its kinetic energy. particularly its kinetic energy. <laughs> so, this energy we can think of as the internal energy plus the kinetic energy. <laughs> now, let us look to the different terms in it. Let us first start with the work done. The work on the system in this case the system is as you say the system is subjected to two different type of forces the body forces as well as the surface forces. And obviously, both if we considering consider a very small material element of fluid moving fluid then both the forces will do some amount of work on it. So, let us start this term by term first of all let us consider the work done on the moving fluid system. <laughs> this will be by body forces and surface forces. Assume a small material element of delta tau once again So, how much will be the work done by done on this material element by the body forces? See the total body force is rho f i d tau work done is a scalar product of the velocity and force rate of work done. Hmm? and the scalar product in our initial notation we write like this. Okay. So, this will be the rate of work done <coughs> okay, we will be happy with rate of work done rate for all the term because the original equation the first law of thermodynamics can also be expressed as a rate equation. It was just expressed as a change of change equation, but we can express it as a rate of change equation that all the term instead of just writing simply d we can write is d d t of e. So, this rate is fine no problem. Now, what will be the 
work done by the surface forces again of course, the rate of work. Yes, how much is the total surface force? If the surface bounding this element, the surface of this element d tau delta s as we are writing, then the total surface force is as before sigma i j n j d s and again a scalar product with the velocity. So, this will be u y sigma i j n j d s and if we add the two we get the total work or rate of total work done by the forces. However, there is a difficulty in adding the two term one is a volume integral other is a surface integral. So, once again we have to express this surface integral by volume integral using that divergence theorem and that is quite obvious quite easy what what it will be Okay. So, the total work and okay, we can the rate we are not writing that word rate. So, total work by the external forces which again can be written as from the first two term you see what it is we can take out the u i from the first two term we can take out the u i
Okay, the first term is the work done by the body force, and okay, let's uh, before going that complete it. What is this? Rho a phi plus d sigma i j d x j. Look back to the Navier-Stokes equation. The most general form of the Navier-Stokes equation, where we have not uh, replaced sigma i j, and this is the right hand side or the force acting which is causing the change in momentum. Hmm? So, this term in the bracket is actually what is d u i d t rho d u i d t the left hand side of the Navier Stokes equations. So, this is Okay. See even this first term now can also be expressed as this. This is what the entire term is, of course, the rate of change of kinetic energy per unit volume, kinetic energy of the bulk motion. Okay, not the kinetic energy of the molecular motion, because you are thinking in terms of energy equation or internal energy, so we should differentiate that. All of you must be well aware of that what we call is internal energy is also basically kinetic energy, but kinetic energy of the random molecular motion. Okay. It is not that, it is what is the flow velocity. So, what we are calling flow kinetic energy. So, looking to this now, looking back, these two term, this first is from the body force, of course, the work done by the body force or the volume force and this is also a part of the work done by the surface forces. This is also another part of the work by the surface forces. The surface for work by the surface force has two terms in it. The work by the surface force has two terms in it, these two and this one part has gone to this kinetic energy term. So, you can see that the volume force along with a part of the surface force is responsible for the change in the kinetic energy of the bulk motion, but what about, what about this term what it is? Think in terms of the element a small element d y j d x j is expressing at change in velocity across the surface, across that material surface and sigma i j is the stress acting. So, it is basically expressing a deformation of the element. This work is equivalent to a deformation of the element. And of course, it is not going to the kinetic energy of this molecule or sorry the bulk motion. And we can say that this essentially is changing the internal energy of the system. It is not affecting the bulk kinetic energy, but it is affecting the internal energy. So, part of the surface force is instrumental for rate of change in inter 
internal energy while the remaining part is along with the body force is instrumental in rate of change of kinetic energy. Now, as far as so this is what about the work done, we have got the work done term. Now, look to the heat added. How can be heat added to a system? Heat can be added to the system by conduction and any other form of heat addition at this stage we will neglect at this stage we will neglect, because this is the most uh, usual and or most common flow cases that is the only thing which is important. Of course, in certain cases the heat by radiation convection is already can be taken care of by the other process, because all these are convective acceleration. So, if there is a convective, convective term that convective heat transfer will automatically be taken care of in the rate of change of the energy part, because you are considering convection. By Eulerian description, you need not consider convection separately, it is always included. Of course, even in Lagrangian case also it is included, but it is little difficult to see. In the Lagrangian case, the derivative is simply ddt, partial derivative with respect to time. So, you do not really see clearly that the convection is also part of it. But in case of Eulerian description, because you express the material derivative is like in that way, there is a convective term. So, the convection is always included. <laughs> so, other form of heat addition like say heating effect through radiation or any other processes. So, that we are not going to consider here. I mean you are not considering extremely high temperature okay, at which stage many other processes are involved that we are not going to consider. So, How much will be the amount of heat added? How much is the heat flux across a surface through conduction? How much heat can go out from a surface or come in? What go out or come in, whatever it is? Hmm? On what it depends? Temperature gradient, temperature gradient, okay, fine. And the rate of heat transfer is coefficient of thermal, coefficient of thermal um, conductivity into gradient of temperature, okay. So, this can be written again, say thermal conductivity, let us write k, okay, the gradient.
and once again we can express it as a volume integral by using that same divergence theorem and Hmm. But we have taken that uh, we are considering that heat added to the system as positive. We are considering towards the system because you are adding heat to the system that we have taken as the positive. Okay. If you look to that first equation we wrote for the first law of thermodynamics in which we have added that uh, d e equal to d q plus d w both are both we have taken what is added to the system as positive. Okay, what you are saying is correct usually the this is known as Fourier's law of heat transfer Fourier law of heat transfer and the law is usually expressed in that form q equal to minus k grad t, but because of our this notation so we have made it positive. Okay. <coughs> so, now we can write the complete energy conservation equation. energy conservation equation or in short energy equation <coughs> that first the thermodynamical relation which is written for unit mass will write it as a rate equation and we will also write instead of instead unit mass we will write as per unit volume. Now, at this case you can see that this kinetic energy term from both the sides gets cancelled. The kinetic energy term from both the sides gets cancelled. So, it becomes an equation for internal energy only alone. However, this energy expression as you will see later on that they are expressed in various form. Okay. In certain form it is kept on both sides okay. rather this itself is written as something different as total energy or something this part hmm. and also in many cases instead of coming to this form these two parts is written in this form itself 
without doing this addition they are kept like this. So, in various form they are expressed, but here we will just cancel them and write it in this form. The other forms we are we will not be writing. So, we have here the rate of this con this itself contains that convection. Okay. So, convective transfer of temperature is not required. Like coefficient of viscosity, this coefficient of thermal conductivity is also a function of temperature. And in case if it is, if it can be approximated as constant, then this k will come out and this will become simply Laplacian of temperature, this this term. Okay. If k can be taken as a constant, in that case this term will simply become a Laplacian of temperature. Let us forget. Now, let us come to the rather the first term sigma i j d u y d x j. We have many times already expressed d u y d x j that is the velocity gradient tensor as sum of the rate of strain tensor plus the tensor representing what is it? d u y d x j as sum of one symmetric tensor and one anti symmetric tensor that we have been do, doing it many times. So, this we can again write sigma i j e i j using that same notations what we had. See sigma i j xi i j, sigma i j xi i j is identically 0. Sigma i j xi i j is identically 0, because sigma i j is a symmetric tensor and xi i j is an anti symmetric tensor. What is sigma i j xi i j? For i equal to 1 to 3, j equal to 1 to 3, sigma i j xi i j will be what? Let us write it on this side. What is sigma i j xi i j? Here both the indices both the indices are repeating. So, it is sum over both it is a it is a sum over both i and j. So, this can be written as sigma 1 1 xi 1 1 plus sigma 1 2 xi 1 2 plus sigma 1 3 xi 1 3 plus sigma 2 1 xi 2 1 plus sigma 2 2 xi 2 2 plus sigma 2 3 xi 2 3 plus See, xi is a anti symmetric matrix, it is half of d u i d x j minus d u j d x i an anti symmetric matrix. So, it is all diagonal elements are 0. So, these all these diagonal are 0, xi 1 1 is 0, xi 2 2 is 0. Now, see sigma 1 2 xi 1 2 and sigma 2 1 xi 2 1, sigma 1 2 and sigma 2 1 are same sigma is a symmetric matrix, xi 1 2 and xi 2 1 are opposite sign. So, they get cancelled and see all these terms get cancelled. So, sigma i j xi i j is identically 0. So, this becomes only sigma i j e i j.
express or replace sigma i j by what we have already found sigma i j. Sigma i j we have already found as minus p delta i j plus 2 mu Look to this first term. What is this? P e i j delta i j. Okay, minus p e i j delta i j. What is e i j delta i j? Yes. What will be P or delta i j e i j e i j delta i j you know delta i j is non 1 only when i equal to j otherwise it is 0. So, it, it will become simply e i i. So, the first term is minus E i i P E i i. What is E i i? Rate of expansion, hmm? rate of expansion or dilatation. Okay. Now, this this entire equation is our rate equation. Okay. So, if we forget this that rate this is pressure and expansion what is that what in thermodynamics is usually called as pv work or compressive work compression work so the first term gives that more interesting is the second term see the second term can be written as can you See it is two mu e i j e i j okay minus what is one third again here also there is e i j delta i j which will again become e i i and e i i in this case also you can write as e k k e i i or e k k writing is all the same. So, this again become it will be quite a long term if we expand it is quite a long term but as you can see hmm? why it is how it is square see already we had duk dx another duk dx we are getting from ej delta ij 
E i j delta i j is E i i and instead of writing E i i if you write E k k it is all the same we can change it. any dummy variable can always be changed i e in E i i i is a dummy variable it means E 1 1 E 2 plus E 2 2 plus E 3 3 the meaning of E i i is E 1 1 plus E 2 2 plus E 3 3 and meaning of E k k is same E 1 1 plus E 2 2 plus E 3 3 and what is E? E, e i e i i is d y d x i. So, e k k is d u k d x k. So, that is what we have written d u k d x k and d k k is same. So, either you write e k k square or d u k d x anything. And as you can see clearly the second term can never be negative. The second term can never be negative, because this E i j E i j contains this E 1 1 square E 2 2 square E 3 3 square, which is or one the second term is simply one third of E 1 1 square plus E 2 2 square plus E 3 3 square and the first term contains e 1 1 square e 2 2 square e 3 3 square also many other term which are also again square term all the terms are square term. So, the second term can never be larger than this and since all the term present here are square terms this second term can never be negative. Now, looking to this what is this? what is this part of the work? Work done by what? Looking from here, this is what is that so called tangential stresses. This is part of the deviatoric stress containing only that part of the normal stress which sums to 0 plus the tangent and the tangential stresses. So, this is work by the this is work done by the tangential stresses or viscous shear stresses okay. and what we can see that this work done by this viscous shear stresses is always positive. That means, it is only one way process, it is all only one way process <coughs> in which only the kinetic energy moves towards the internal energy that is the only possibility and this energy since we cannot get back is basically lost. So, it is a dissipation this term is called a dissipation term and usually just denoted by a single symbol phi quite often again do not get it confused with the velocity potential because that is a standard notation used conventionally phi for many things. So, the second term is always positive and is known as dissipation. The first term is the conventional or familiar pressure volume or pressure sorry mm. compression work P V work pressure volume work called as compression work and in this case this is a useful work whatever work we give we can get it back whatever work we use while compressing it we can get back it while compression. <laughs> So, here also you see that we have not introduced any further unknown except this thermal conductivity. Only this internal energy is the only additional unknown or temperature which we set forth. So, there is no further unknown what we had 
earlier three component of velocity pressure density and temperature or internal energy now we have that along with the equation of state we now have six equations with six unknowns of course two additional parameter mu and k the coefficient of viscosity and thermal conductivity which are usually a function of temperature and if they are provided as a function of temperature our set of equations is complete. Now, we have as many equations as there are unknowns. However, as before we mentioned that when the flow is incompressible, the temperature does not come through the equation of state, the equation of state simply becomes density is constant. So, there is no temperature and mu is also a constant. So, obviously, this energy equation is not at all required. In case whatever small temperature difference or small temperature variation is involved, if you want to find that it can be done by solving the other set completely first that is the con combination of equation of continuity and e Navier-Stokes equations together, find the velocity and pressure use that velocity and pressure to solve this equation to get the temperature. That means, they need not be solved together, they can be solved independently. Because you see that in those equations then there is no term which depends on temperature. The equation is completely decoupled from the energy equation and can be solved separately. Mu is then not a function of temperature, if the temperature variation is very small say just about a, a 50 to 100 degree type of temperature variation you are uh, associated with in that case mu can be taken as constant. Okay. A standard value of mu can be taken in that and <coughs> because even though temperature mu is a function of temperature, but the variation is so small with temperature that over a range of 50 or 100 degree temperature the variation in mu is really negligible. Okay. So, that type of small temperature difference is not affecting mu. So, they can be solved separately the equations and once that solution is found the well particularly the velocity field because to solve this equation you must know the velocity. This equation contains all velocity, this E they are all velocity, even here also there is velocity. When you write this is in the full expans expanded form there is velocity associated with it. So, without knowing the velocity this equation cannot be solved, but the other equation can be solved without knowing the temperature. <laughs> so, this you can also summarize that if the flow is incompressible, and temperature variation is small the continuity and navier stokes equations equation can be solved they are decoupled from energy equation they are decoupled from energy equation.
once they are solved for velocity and pressure q and p energy equation can be solved for temperature separately. We will consider one or two small examples as uh, for solving this Navier Stokes equation. Uh, particularly, uh, I think you have already solved one or two problem using this Navier Stokes equation. Okay. Without even writing the Navier Stokes equation or perhaps knowing the name. Perhaps you have not heard of the name of these equations, Navier Stokes equations, but you derived a special form of Navier Stokes equation for a special application and solved it. <coughs> so, we will, as you mentioned already, that for the general case, there is no solution. For some simple problems, for some very simple cases, some solutions are there, and of course, most of them we will leave for later, but one or two simple cases we will consider to look for the solution of the Navier Stokes equations. <coughs> 